So when we're thinking about the overall process of foliars, when we're thinking about the season ahead, the sap testing goes first. And then we're doing the jar testing, we're mixing our nutrition in, and then we're mixing our nutrition with our biostimulants, and that all gets mixed into the boom spray, and then we go and spray those crops that we've sap tested. Uh, we're typically spraying those out three times a year and hitting those critical points of influence that, that is needed for each crop. So the sap testing is really an important part of deciding what minerals we're gonna use. So then for typically for wheat, we're doing a sap test around tillery. We'll do those sap tests, get the sap results back and build our mineral profile. After the sap tests, then we start with what can we mix together and what's gonna behave. Dad's doing jar tests all the time. And when we make a lot of these products, we might make say a shuttle of magnesium and a shuttle of zinc or, or a shotgun blend, which has got a lot of other things in it. We need to actually then add all those things together and make sure they're gonna behave in the boom spray as well. It's not just at a shuttle level that we're doing jar tests it's actually at the end of the boom spray level as well. So you can see here, Dad's just got a few things. Um, he's just got a little jar of acetic acid that he's been playing with. Um, he just got a little paint stirrer here and, and a jug for mixing things up, just like we're doing in the shuttle. This is no different than, than the process for the shuttle. And also pH, we're always just checking the pH. Because we're using an acid-based spray program, it's easier if everything is either neutral or acid-based. Checking the pH, writing it on the bottle, and then just keeping a track of, of what works and what doesn't. And then basically we just you know, write things down in a, in a text message between each other, and then I'd chuck them on, on the computer and put them in a OneDrive folder, uh, just to keep a track of our recipes. This is a really important step. Things go wrong in mixing, it's easier if they go wrong at this level, uh, if they bubble, if they explode, if all sorts of things. If they settle out, if they turn to solid, it's a lot easier to deal with it here than dealing with a solid in an IBC or a solid in the lines of your boom spray. So Dad actually, did, Dad did do, did do a jar test and it fizzed a little bit, but not heaps. When we got to a boom spray level, it actually fizzed right out the top of the boom spray. So it was an alkaline product, so it's the urea SOA, with our very, very acidic shotgun trace mineral blend. And so what I've done here is I've recreated that. Looks like, so you can see here, super foamy on top. Got a bit more citric acid there, and you can see how that is just so foamy. So as soon as you add the alkaline and the acid, and that acid blend, it just keeps foaming up. And that's exactly what happened in the boom spray. This is a really important step of the whole entire process. So we've just done our jar tests, everything works. Now it's time to start making it in bulk. So you can see here we've got our, our thousand litre mixing shuttle. And so we've added our water, we then start the pump get the agitation going, and then we can add the fulvic acid, the citric acid, and then today we're gonna to make a magnesium mix. Couple of instances where I've tried to dissolve it without chelation first, and I've had some settle out. It solves a few problems if you chelate, if, it's, if the water is already prepared, ready to go. So it's warm, and then your fulvic acids and your citric acid is in there and the water's chelated, ready to go. And then as it dissolves, it chelates. Now the reason we do that chelation is around binding the mineral nutrition with a carbon source. And basically what we're doing is, is the carbon source is wrapping up the minerals and that helps us get those minerals into the plant. So this is just a super simple setup. It's an IBC that's been washed out we simply just cut a hole in the, in the top here. You can buy these lids, you know, from your local spray shop for $70. So we just make that so we can pour the product in. We have a, a standard pump and we just, we suck out the bottom here and then we push it in this top side. So here we've just got a two inch 
uh, two inch hose running to a pump uh, into a two inch fitting here. And then if we look inside here, we've just got a couple of simple outlets. We just wanna stir this as much as possible. We fill it partly full of water. For some of our, our mixes, we do like to warm water. Super simple spa pump that we use. Um, this will warm water to 38 degrees. And that's just to help that dissolving process. The other main bit of kit is one of these. So your simple drill with your mixing attachment on the end of it. You're able to just get down here into the corners, mix your floor and just break up anything, that, any solids or anything like that in the bag. So we just mix up a thousand litre lots. We've got two of these mixing shuttles as you can see. So we'll mix in here. Once that's ready to go, we'll just transfer that into another shuttle that's been washed out. It's a cheap way to do it. Um, easy for us to mix, easy for us to handle, but then easy for us to combine into the sprayer and go spraying. But this is scalable. There's no reason why this couldn't be done at a 5,000 litre tank or a 10,000 litre tank. So we line up all our shuttles and put them into storage. They can stay there for as long as we like. Any of these shuttles that we want, we just pick up and take over there to the boom spray into our loading area. The tanks you see there are, are just dissolved urea tanks. And so we're, we're pulling the dissolved urea out, using that as our water source, and then adding the minerals to it. We're not just adding the minerals to it, we're also adding uh, some biostimulants and some biology as well. So we've got some sampy fish, and then we've got some molasses, a fermented seaweed product that we use as well. And then we've got our, our shotgun blend, we've got a magnesium blend, and then there's just a few other mixes here behind me as well. So this just allows us to be totally flexible with our mixing options. Get those SAT, SAT tests back, look at what's deficient, make up a mix, load them up in the boom spray and away we go. So one of our ingredients for our foldies is dissolved urea. So we're taking granular urea and we're dissolving in water. Super simple process. So there's a tank here alongside me. We, we fill it two thirds full of water. And then basically we pull water from the bottom through this high, uh, high velocity pump, poly pump. And then we put it back in through one side here. Now on the inside of that is an elbow and that makes the water in this tank swirl fast. And then what we do is in the truck, we've got our six to seven tonne of urea and we add that to our 20,000 litres of water. And then we actually make a 30,000 litre batch of dissolved urea. So as the urea dissolves, the water gets cold. So we don't want to pump it in all at once. We basically just want to dribble that urea over about an hour and let that dissolve. And then that is ready to go into the boom spray with all our trace minerals and our biostimulants. So we've got our inlet hose here that's coming from our dissolved urea tanks. Okay, so that's our main product that's going in and that's coming in this side. And then we've got our outlet hose that's going into the boom spray. This hose here, which is to one side, comes into this T-piece. That allows us to actually pull out of these shuttles here which is our minerals and our biostimulant products. So we've lined up the shuttles with our biostimulants. So we start pulling in the liquid urea using this hose here. As we top the tank up, we're gonna start pulling in all our other biostimulants and minerals at the same time. And that's going up through this hose, up through that inline filter, and up in the boom spray ready to go to the paddock. So a super easy, simple thing to have in the line is uh, just a pre-filter. So no solids or chunks go into the boom spray. So you can see here, we just got a simple inline filter. On the back side of the filter, we've just got a tap so that if we're, if we're finding that that filter is actually blocking up, just as the pressure is going through, just crack the tap, push a little bit out onto the ground and then turn the tap off. So that's just a really easy way to make sure you're not gonna have any issues with your boom spray nozzles and jets and things like that. Um, and a super easy way to clean out a filter. This is exactly the same boom spray that we use for all our herbicides and fungicides and insecticides. The only thing we do is we just make sure that we give it a good clean before we're moving into foliar or back into our herbicide program. We haven't gone and brought any other nozzles or filters. It's exactly the same as it was 15 years ago.